Okay, another thing here in Romans 9, you say, who are you to answer back to God? Romans 9, 20, the thing that is being molded cannot say to the molder, why did you make me like this? And one more answer to your question, why did God choose me and not some other member in my family or somebody else? Why did God bring me here and some others are not here who are gone into a wayward type of Christianity? Or why did some people come here and then fall away and go away because they thought the message was too strong? It's not in my hands. You may think it's in the hands of the elders. Let me tell you once and for all, it is not in the hands of the elders. <laughs> not at all. They may do certain things, but ultimately it's not in the hands of any elder. God is the one who decides. He hardens somebody, verse 9, 18, and he has mercy on somebody. Some who have mercy continue on in humility, and some who get hardened, think too much of themselves and fall away. I've seen that happen in many CFC churches. I don't question it. I say, God, God is the one. I'm not God. And he, then here is another answer, verse 21. Doesn't the potter have a right over the clay to make one from the same lump of clay, mud, to make one vessel for honor, another vessel for common use. And you know, there are potters who make very, very expensive carved designs with clay. They put some color into it and these very, very expensive vessels that are sold for thousands of rupees. And then there's a, that other mud pot made from the same clay which people drink a little tea from in North India and throw it away, worth nothing. You see that in the railway stations in North India. Clay cups. The same mud is another beautiful vessel that costs thousands of rupees because so much of work has gone into it. Colored and beautiful. And, and the Holy Spirit says, doesn't the potter have a right to make one vessel like this, another vessel like that? So, if you are one vessel whom God has made in a special way, can you imagine a stupid vessel thinking that I made myself like this? No. Always remember the potter and the clay whenever you try to compare yourself with another believer or a believer in some other church. The potter makes the clay in whichever way he makes it. You know, many times I've expressed in different messages that I believe a person like Mother Teresa will be way ahead of me in the kingdom of God because she had a lovely heart of love for Jesus Christ. And there are many Catholic converts who have been very disturbed with me with that statement because they say, they've told me this. But they say, how can you teach this? She worshipped Mary and she said the rosary and all types of things. I said to them, my dear brother, those are all problems of the head. She did not understand doctrine properly. But her heart was ten times better than mine in devotion to Jesus. Her sacrifice was probably a thousand times more than mine and yours. Her service for people, she probably did a hundred times more than any of us sitting here for Jesus. And she always used to say, there's place in my throne of my heart only for one person, Jesus Christ. She said that. She wrote it down, not Mary. And like that, there are other people who may have slightly different doctrines from us. We can say, we think, can think that salvation is in a doctrine. It is not. If, salvation, if, if there is a doctrine that should lead to life, that it, it is in a doctrine, but you haven't understood that doctrine properly. That's the problem. We think we have understood it in our head and therefore we are right. See, all the arguments between people about doctrine is in the head level. And that's why people get angry when they discuss something. You can never get me angry in discussing a doctrine because I realize it's not at that level. I've had people come to my house and argue with me and I say, no, I'm not going to argue. You can believe what you like. You can believe I'm a heretic if you like. I will not argue with you. I never argue with the, all the people who have called me heretic and false teacher and all. No, because I say it's head to head. It's got nothing to do with the head. 
head to head, I know I can argue with somebody and win the argument. All, what have I proved? It has proved that I'm cleverer than you, number one. I know more of the Bible than you. I'm not interested in proving that to anybody. That's why I don't argue, because I have no interest in showing that I know the Bible better than you. I'll show you verses and you know, don't know the Bible enough to show me verses. It's a matter of the heart. And how do you compare two hearts? I can't. I can see by their life, by their fruit, you shall know them, what the heart is like. So when I look at the fruit in a person's life, I know what's going on in his heart. And that's why you find so many people who sit in CFC who believe the same doctrine, but completely different levels of spiritual life. Why is that? Because it's got nothing to do with the head. It's got to do with the heart. Remember that. Man looks at the outward appearance, looks at the head. God looks at the heart. Very, very important. So this is a truth that I found great comfort in. God has got every right over the potter, as a potter over the clay. He can do what he likes. Two equally wholehearted people, he can make one more prominent and the other insignificant and unknown. <laughs> it's his choice. They're equally wholehearted. And one day, when Christ comes again, both will get the same reward. Even though one was world famous, and the other was not even known outside his own village. So what? But the humble person accepts that. He's not interested in being world famous. <laughs> he says, Lord, I want to be great in the sight of the Lord. Like the angel told Zechariah, you're going to have a son who's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. It's one of my favorite phrases. Great in the sight of the Lord. <clears throat> Long for that, my brothers and sisters. Not great in the eyes of CFC or its elders or Zach Poonin or any of that trash. Great in the eyes of the Lord. Make that your longing and the passion of your heart. And the, what the angel told Zechariah in Luke chapter 1, the great in the sight of the Lord. God has every right to make one for honor and one for dishonor. 